All right, welcome to chapter four. Um, this is the, 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 basically it closes out the bookkeeping cycle that we started in, in chapter three, okay? Uh, the first part of this chapter really explains that in, in the corporate world, we use something called the accrual basis of accounting. There are other ways to do accounting. The most common way outside of the accrual basis, which is required for corporations, is something called the cash basis of accounting. And that's basically a lot of small businesses uh, will do a cash basis uh, if they're sole proprietors, if they're partners, partnerships. Um, and it's just basically they just follow the cash. You know, when cash comes in because they, they did work, they mark it down as revenue. When they pay a bill, they mark it out as an expense. Um, so they just follow the cash. But corporations can't do that specifically. They have to do something called the accrual basis, which is what you're learning in this class. Um, there are time periods that we talked about in terms of how to measure profit and loss. Uh, one month, you'll have an income statement every month. You'll have an income statement done every quarter to show a profit or a loss. And the longest period of time is one year. Well, what happens after that year is done? Well, they have to basically go through a process of closing the record for one year and starting new records for the next year. And so you're gonna be learning about that as well in this chapter, okay? Um, and so that's, or we're gonna be starting with objective one. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to go right through the uh, journal entries for adjustments and we'll save the, the last part, which is relatively heavy workload for last. Okay. So you've heard about it back in chapter two when we were introduced to GAP and several assumptions um, that are worked into it. So one of those assumptions, the periodicity assumption, uh, again, assumes that business life is broken into artificial time periods. And like I say, uh, we measure things uh, monthly on the income statement. So the periodicity assumption uh, looks at a period of time and the financial statements that correspond with that are the income statement and the retained earnings statement. So we will do an income statement every month. We will do an income statement every quarter. A quarter is a three month period of time. Uh, and of course, the longest we will measure our profit and losses is a, is a one year period of time. Okay. Now, businesses have a choice as to how they want to measure that year. Some businesses will simply use the calendar year, and you know the calendar year is January the 1st through December 31st. So a lot of businesses will simply do their accounting or measure their period of a year simply following the calendar. But for other businesses, um, report closing their, in essence, closing their books, reporting their final uh, profit and loss for the year doesn't make sense for all businesses. Because for some businesses, late December is still very busy uh, for them. For example, retail, it's still Christmas shopping season. So there's before Christmas sales and after Christmas sales. So it doesn't make sense to force a retail company to report out every December 31st and say, this is our profit and loss because they're still actually very busy in their season, right? So for companies like that, they can choose any 12 month period of time uh, to do their accounting records. And that's called a fiscal year. So for a retail, like I said, you're still doing, <clears throat> you know, Obviously, most retailers do most of their um, sales and, and profits during the Christmas shopping season, but the Christmas shopping season extends beyond Christmas, as you know. After Christmas sales, the malls are still packed, the stores are still busy, all the way into, I would, I would guess, you know, into mid-January at least, um, Christmas sales or after Christmas sales are still kind of going on. And then after that, it's sort of, you know, things kind of dry up. So wouldn't it be better that once things sort of dry up or slow down, 
that's when that business should be reporting its profit and loss for the year. Well, in order to do that, they need to have their own fiscal year, their own 12 month period of time to measure their profit and loss. And so instead of using the calendar year, which is January the one through December 31, they can pick another 12 month period of time. So they might decide to use February the first through the following January the 31st, that's 12 full months, that's a fiscal year. And they'll measure their profit and loss during that period of time, okay, rather than a calendar year. So a lot of businesses decide because of their, uh, their type of business, where they're busier at certain periods of time, such as retail, that using a fiscal year is much better for them uh, to report their profit and loss. And so their period of time for their year is measured differently than other businesses which can use the calendar year. And like I said, I mean, it's like, you know, if I'm a, if I'm a dental outfit or, or a, a doctor's, you know, uh, most doctors are incorporated. Um, you know, it, it doesn't make any sense for me not to use the calendar year. So it's like, you know, I don't have a big season. It's not like, you know, dentists gear up for like after Halloween. Okay, we're going to have a, we're going to have a huge amount of kids coming in with cavities right now. And, you know, they, that's just not how it happens. Right. Or it's not like hospitals and doctors plan like, oh, today, this month is heart attack month. We're going to be, you know, we're going to be killing it. Um, we're going to be super busy. Let's not do the, the report until later. Um, it, it just doesn't work that way. You know, people get sick uh, seven days a week, 365 days a year. There's no cycle for that. Unlike retail, where you'd know there's a cycle. Um, certain um, hospitality industries, hotels, et cetera, they also seem to have a cycle. They have a big period of time when they're super, super busy, and then other periods of time when they're quiet. And so doesn't it make better sense for those companies to do their fiscal reporting, do their uh, profit and loss statements for the year during a quiet period of time, rather than do it when they're already super busy and in the middle of things. So the fiscal year allows them to do that. Okay. So again, uh, the periodicity assumption is part of generally accepted accounting principles where we are assuming that all businesses are dividing um, their lives into artificial time periods. The artificial time periods, as you know, are a month, a quarter, which is a three month period, and a year, which is a 12 month period. But as you now know, businesses have a choice. They can use the calendar year or they can create a 12 month year you know, but it's gotta be 12 consecutive months. It's not like they can pick and choose. <laughs> so um, so that's, uh, that's what they mean by this. Mm -hmm. All right, so part of generally accepted accounting principles, um, some of the most important ones that are focused on here in this chapter is something called the revenue recognition principle. And this is specific to what we call the accrual method of accounting, which is what you're learning. This is what corporations must follow. These are the rules and the procedures they must follow. So the revenue recognition principle says that the company must recognize its revenue at the point of time that it happened with the customer, even if the customer is not paying for it until the future. So in other words, um, right, we have to say, you know, let's, let's say that the date is, uh, you know, December 31st, uh, and we, we close our books at the end of the year, the end of the calendar year. We sell something to the customer on the 31st of December, but the customer is not going to pay us until sometime in late January, um, right? When do we actually recognize the revenue? Well, we have to recognize the revenue in the period it happened. These are two separate accounting periods. If we use a calendar year, right? The customer um, that we had just happened to be on the very last day of that year. This is where we have to show the revenue, 
the revenue has to be shown in the year that it happened, even though the customer is not going to pay us until the following accounting year, the following year. And so this is basically what uh, the revenue recognition uh, principle states. We have to recognize the revenue in the period that it happened, even if we're not getting paid for it till later. <clears throat> and so here is a, uh, this is a textbook example here from the dry cleaners. Uh, in this case, they're using a monthly period of time rather than an annual period of time, which is fine. So they clean clothing at the end of June, on June 30th, but the customer isn't picking it up until July and paying for it in July. Well, according to the revenue recognition principle, the work was done on June 30th. So the revenue must be part of June's revenue. So when you look at the income statement for June, this money is there as part of that revenue. That's what this is saying. Even though, as it says here, the customer is not actually going to be paying for it until July, which is another accounting period. But we don't care. The revenue recognition principle says that whenever we earn the revenue is the day that we need to mark it down in our, in our books, in our journal. Okay. So that's all this is saying. Recognize it when it's earned. Of course, if it's happening to revenue, it's happening to expenses um, because they're on the same statement. They're on the same income statement, right? So the expense recognition principle basically is the same thing. We have to recognize the expense in the time that we generated the revenue, right? Uh, not <clears throat> at any other point in time. So there's an old saying, you know, let the expenses follow the revenues because you need to have certain expenses in order to sell your products or services. And so they should be, as it says here, they should be matched in the same time period, in the same month, in the same year. They need to be matched. That's really what this is about. Okay. So <clears throat> um, you learned a few things, right? This is a this is sort of a flashback from chapter two. The periodicity assumption uh, tells us that businesses uh, divide up their economic life into the same time periods. They divide them up into monthly quarterly and annual time periods. So the shortest period of time they will measure their profit and loss is a month. The longest period of time will be one year. And as we noted earlier, they have a choice in to create that year. They can use the calendar year or they can put together another 12 month period of time for their fiscal year. Right. Um, part of accounting principles, revenue recognition and expense recognition because the periodicity assumption really is about um, the things that are measured on a period of time are the income statement and the retained earnings statement. These are the statements that measure things on a periodic basis, yes? So that's why, you know, revenue and expenses are a big part of these principles is because that's the very first thing we do is an income statement. And the only two things on an income statement are revenue and expenses. So we better get those right, is what they're saying. And as this is telling you, this is all part of GAAP. This is required by corporations, uh, public corporations specifically, that need to follow the rules of generally accounting, uh, generally accepted accounting principles or GAAP. Okay. But again, the periodicity assumption is very specific because the very, very first statements that we that we have to do are the income statement is first and then of course from that we do the retained earnings statement so because the the income statement is the very very first statement that we do we better get it right because everything flows from there right the differences on the income statement is the net income that flows to retained earnings and that flows on to the balance sheet so obviously getting the income statement right means that all the other numbers are going to flow properly and reflect uh, faithfully what has really happened. Okay, and what we're learning here is again, the accrual basis of accounting. 
um, which basically is we record things in the book when they happen, okay? In the specific period, in that month, uh, in that year. So revenues are recognized when they are earned, not when you get paid for them. Expenses are recognized when they happen, which we call when they incur, even if you didn't pay the cash for the expense yet. We still have to make sure all of our monthly statements are accurate, okay? And so this is really uh, what we're learning in this class. There is another basis called the cash basis of accounting. It's used, uh, it, it only does the records when cash is coming in or cash is going out. Um, we don't use that here because it's not allowed by GAAP, but it is another form of doing accounting. And it is very common to do it if uh, you're a small business, such as a sole proprietorship or a partnership. The cash basis is much easier to do in some ways, um, although it may not be as accurate, which is why GAAP says we can't use it. So that's all you really gotta, gotta know about this. Uh, you know, there's no details um, outside of that. All right, so because we have to make sure that our financial statements, particularly the income statement, which is the first one, is super accurate, right? Because again, if we screw up on the income statement, look where that flows. It flows to the retained earnings statement, it flows to the balance sheet, everything gets screwed up, right? So let's make sure that <clears throat> all the revenue is there and all the expenses are there so we can be sure that that number for revenue and expenses and our profit is good is good so that means that we have to go through a double checking process what we call adjusting entries we have to check all the accounts to make sure we recognize the revenue or we had an expense that month that should have been recognized and so that's really what adjusting entries are about. It's just sort of a double check to make sure, hey, did we get all that revenue in, in our income statement? Hey, did we make, did we have all, do we have all the expenses in this period counted for? Right. That's really the purpose of adjusting entries. And these are required every time the company puts together their income statement, okay? Because everything's gonna flow from the income statement. As you know, from chapter one, income statement is always first, retained earnings statement is second, balance sheet is third. So if that income statement is wrong, it flows. Then these other numbers are gonna be wrong. Um, so it's critical that we double check. And that's really what adjusting entries is sort of about, sort of a double checking. Uh, did we get all that revenue on the statement? Did we get all the expenses uh, before we say, okay, we're, these numbers are final? So because we're going to be needing to do these entries, again, entries happen in the journal, right? If it's an entry, it's a journal entry, which means these are things you're going to be writing in the journal. And if you're writing anything in the journal, you know that from the, those numbers travel to the ledger, which means some accounts are going to be changed. So this is why you can't forget anything from chapter three in this chapter, because it all repeats, it all repeats. So these adjusting entries are basically going to affect one account on the income statement. So it's either going to be a revenue account or an expense account that's going to be affected by this. And then of course, <clears throat> the offset is going to be a balance sheet account, balance sheet account, as you're going to see. So the adjusting entries are going to affect one income statement account, either a revenue or expense account is going to be affected and one balance sheet account, specifically either an asset or a liability is going to be affected, as you're going to see. And the whole purpose of that is to make sure that we get every single penny of revenue recognized this month, this quarter, this year. Did we get all those expenses recognized this month, this quarter, this year? Because those financial statements have to be as accurate and reliable and faithfully uh, represented as possible, right? That's the whole purpose of going through this. We can't be sloppy with our financial statements, okay? Okay, 
So um, <clears throat> you're going to be learning about two different types of adjusting entries. Learning objective uh, two, which is coming up soon, is all about those adjusting entries that are referred to as deferrals. And learning objective three in this chapter is focused on those adjusting entries that are called accruals. Okay, so we're going to be learning about this in learning objective two uh, for deferrals, and we'll be learning about accruals in learning objective three. And I'll be explaining those in a lot more detail when we get to them. In general, they sort of explain um, what they are here, but again, we're going to be getting into very specific uh, details in these objectives. Um, everything starts with the trial balance. The trial balance basically is the ledger, but in one nice form. Right? Everything is here. All these accounts we get from the general ledger, all the balances are from the general ledger, so we know that everything is okay. Um, so when it comes to, when they mean a deferral, you're going to see that <clears throat> we, uh, to defer means to wait, right? So in essence, you are waiting to recognize the revenue and you are waiting to recognize the expense. So that's basically what to de deferrals are about waiting to recognize. So what are we waiting to recognize? Well, let's take a look at supplies. Supplies are an asset, but after we use those supplies, then a portion of this will be supplies expense, but we have to wait to use the supplies first before we can expense those supplies. So this is the asset account supplies. We're gonna see an expense account supplies expense come up when we do the adjusting entry for that. Prepaid insurance is an asset that's also used up re relatively quickly. It's certainly used every month when we do a financial statement like the income statement. So one of the questions is, did we, how much of this prepaid insurance did we use this month? If we used any of this, we can expense what we've used. That's an adjusting entry, right? So we have used, after one month, we've used one month of the policy. So one month of that policy is going to be an insurance expense, okay? Uh, equipment um, goes through a process that we talked about called depreciation. Depreciation is a very slow moving process of saying, okay, we have this very long-term asset we're gonna be using for three years, five years, 10 years, what have you. The uh, value of that asset that we have used for this month will be going to a depreciation expense. And so we will have a depreciation expense for uh, for equipment. So again, we have to use these first before we can expense them. So you're going to see coming up that you're going to have a supplies expense. Every time we use supplies, we check how much we used at the end of the month, right? That's the shortest period of time we measure is a month. If we used any supplies, whatever we used is supplies expense. Same thing for prepaid insurance. <clears throat> whatever we used at the end of that month becomes insurance expense. Same thing for equipment, whatever we, whatever value we've used that month is going to be depreciation expense. So those are considered deferred expenses. Deferred revenue is really about unearned service revenue. We have to wait to say it's ours, right? Remember, unearned service revenue means the client gave us money up front. So we owe the client the work that they paid for up front. So in essence, the client is waiting for the work and we're waiting to call this ours. When we do do, when we actually do perform the work, then it's no longer unearned service revenue, it's service revenue, which means that we can show it on our income statement as part of our revenue. Well, if we've earned some of this, we also have to decrease the liability. We no longer owe that, so we can remove that liability from our books. And so that's another deferred entry.
Okay. Um, so those are the deferrals, and you'll see those in more detail in Learning Objective 2. I just wanted to introduce them. Now, in terms of um, the accruals, uh, that's a little bit different. An accrual basically means, in this case, we're going to earn, we're going to say it's revenue now, although we're not going to collect it until later. So to accrue means we're going to count it now, but get paid later in the form of revenue. Or for an expense, we're going to say we expensed it now, although we're going to pay it later. And so you'll see that for accounts receivable is basically we have to do accounts receivable, um, as you'll see in Learning Objective 3, <clears throat> when we earn revenue now, but we're not collecting it until later. And we do the same thing for salaries or wages expense and interest expense. Um, those are things that often are not payable until later, but we expense it in this particular period. Now, remember, we're looking at simply what's happened this month or this quarter or this year when we do this. So it'll all become uh, a little bit easier. Okay. Uh, so here we're at the do it review ex uh, exercise at the back of uh, the page. Um, this is on specifically on page 156. And uh, here it's just giving you uh, basically definitions of things. So accrual basis accounting is when we actually have to record the transaction in the ledger when they occur. Okay. Uh, fiscal year is an, a calendar year rather, is an accounting period that follows the calendar January the 1st through December 31st. Periodicity assumption is the economic life being divided into time periods. When I ask what the time periods are, you already know the shortest time period is a month. The longest time period is a year. Uh, expense recognition principle. Um, here, expenses are matched with revenues in the period of time that they happen. Okay, so I'm going to give us a quick break here.